application of squid-like devices today is to the flux qubit. And qubit, of course, is a, a, a word meaning quantum bit. The simplest kind of flux qubit that we could imagine would be a ring, but now it's interrupted by a single Josephson junction. And once again, this device relies on the superposition of the Josephson properties of the junction and the flux quantization properties of the ring. Let's now suppose that we have an applied flux of precisely one half flux quantum. So that means that the ring can't quite make up its mind whether the current should go around in an anti-clockwise or clockwise direction. And these have equal energies because once again the energy is given by one half L I squared where L is the inductance of, of the loop and let's call IQ the qubit current. Now if we remember back to the beginnings of quantum mechanics, what we always learned was that in a situation where there are two possible solutions to the Schrodinger equation, the correct solution is a linear superposition of the two states. An anti-clockwise current in a ket multiplied by a probability amplitude alpha plus beta times ket of the clockwise current. At this particular point, which we call the degeneracy point, something happens which is entirely familiar from quantum mechanics. We find that there are two possible wave functions, one of which is symmetric, but there is another possible state, which I will call psi antisymmetric. Ideally, you should have a complete 100% swing between the two states. And no one ever sees that for reasons that are obscure. Switching probability of the qubit as we sweep the flux through the degeneracy. And this enables one to form, perform spectroscopy and to do many of the manipulations of atomic physics and nuclear magnetic resonance, for example, Rabi oscillations, spin echoes, and Ramsey fringes. And so in that regard, our superconducting loop involving a single junction, or more commonly today we make devices that for technical reasons have three junctions in, this entity behaves as a macroscopic quantum system and it is macroscopically quantum coherent. One day, uh, not in my lifetime, or probably not in any of your lifetimes either, it might be possible to make a quantum computer. And to do that, you have to be able to couple qubits together in some kind of controllable way.